Glass is hitting theaters soon. Is it unbreakable or did it leave a split? <laughs> we'll let you know right here on Screen Junkies News. Hello, I'm Dan Merle. I'm Ralph Cornett. Well done, sir. Thank you. I enjoy your quippery. Did you enjoy the highly anticipated 19 years in the making mm. sequel, sort of? More or less. And close to the trilogy or not, we'll see. Yeah. Plus. I did. I actually really enjoyed this movie. However, I think that, and if the anecdotal evidence from leaving the screening we were at mm -hmm. last night is any indication, I think this is going to be a very divisive movie. Yes. I think that there are going to be people that buy into it, and there are going to be people that don't buy into it, and and that's really what it comes down to. I want to I want to be very careful about what I say because this is I it's 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 all about setting the expectations, I guess. So like, it's not so much about like you're never going to believe this twist because it's not that kind of movie. As in, like, there's one huge, not Sixth Sense, there's one huge twist that the whole thing, it's more of just, like, this movie is, a, it's a journey. Mm -hmm. And you're you're riding down the line with M. Night Shyamalan in this film. And it's all about, when you get to the destination, are you happy with that destination, or are you not? And I think that's going to dictate what you think about this film, because that destination may not be where you thought you were going. Well, and I think that <clears throat> I would agree, and I think I said earlier um, on our morning show that I agree, and I think this is going to be um, one of the more divided films and divisive films coming out this year. Um, there will be, I believe, very strong reactions mm -hmm. on either side of that equation. Um, there will be true believers. There will be people that are absolute distractors, some of whom some people will actually be right there in the middle, seeing some good points and some negative points. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting about that is, as we've seen over the last couple of years, films like that tend to draw a lot of attention. Um, they tend to make a lot of money. This is tracking to make a lot of money. Audiences are really going to weigh in. I believe I understand what the critical response will be, which mm -hmm. will be split. Uh. Uh, so I apologize. Um, but the audience response is where I'm really, really stuck. And I think you and I don't agree on what we think the audience response is. I think they're going to love it. I think general audiences are going to love it. You don't so much think so. I don't because I think that it, um, it, is, it is a lot more like, Unbra if you look at the two previous films, Unbreakable and Split, yeah. it's a lot more like Unbreakable to me than it was split. Pacing wise? Uh, pacing wise and just as far as what M. Night Shyamalan is doing in the film. Right. His goals, his aims, where he wants to take you, where he wants to leave you. Between the two, I'd say it's much more like Unbreakable. Uh, and Unbreakable was a film that, much like this one, was one that you thought was going one way and then really sort of surprised you in different ways along the way. And I think when you make a film like that, you do risk leaving some people behind. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I actually really, I will be one of those people that will vigorously defend and really enjoy the choices that were made in this film because I think that Glass is the absolute natural progression to the trilogy that M. Night Shyamalan set up with Unbreakable and was split. And so I love what happened, but I, I think that there are gonna be people that really, really maybe don't. And so that's where the divide is gonna be, I think. So if it feels like we're talking around this a little bit, it's because we absolutely are. We, we are going, to. we have to, there will be a spoiler review that's um, released the weekend that this movie opens mm -hmm. in which we will talk in great detail about what happens um, in the film and the structure of the film. It's a little difficult even really to talk about the structure of the film. Um, but I will say this, yeah. that Unbreakable to date is my, with my favorite M. Night movie. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love the structure of the movie. I love the pacing. I love the patience, which is a hallmark of his. Previously, it had been a hallmark of his. Mm -hmm. um, it's beautifully shot. It looked like, before people were doing this, it looked like he was tearing out frames from comic books. He was really, really referencing and playing with that genre really before the heyday that we're currently in, which makes, th this was true for both in a very different way, Incredibles 2, <laughs> Um, and now Glass, it sits in a very different position because yeah. when both those films uh, first came to us or when those franchises first came to us, comic book movies were not in their heyday. No. And so they were doing something that other films weren't doing. Now, and they were doing them really well in a very different way. One was very heightened. We're doing, you know, Incredibles is doing the Fantastic Four and Unbreakable was grounding us yeah. in this world and playing with the idea of, 
you know, almost old school Superman, very classic, where Superman was powered in a very different way. He, gravity worked differently for him, so he could jump really high. He wasn't necessarily flying around and turning the earth on its axis right. and things like that, but we would then saw later. Um, what would it be if human beings were just a little bit or a lot extra special? Mm -hmm. um, that's what Unbreakable was doing, and I think it really played with those tropes brilliantly. Glass, then, then, I think um, you know what Split did besides deliver an incredible performance, give us an incredible performance from James McAvoy was play with the idea of if you are damaged to the point of no repair, what does that possibility actually open up for you? If you're damaged to the point that you don't function like a normal human being anymore, what can you then do with your mind? Mm -hmm. um, so this movie then builds on both those things to your point and continues to play with those themes only I think now it's deconstructing comic books. Instead of playing into it, it's very pointedly playing into it and against at the same mm -hmm. time. It's, it's, it's doing something that I think was talked about and achieved in adaptation. It's setting up your expectations to undercut your expectations. Sure, yeah. Um, very, very pointedly. And so in that sense, what I think is really beautiful about this film is that he knows exactly what he wants he knows he's making very, very specific choices, and he's achieving, I believe, exactly what he set out to achieve, which is all a movie can hope to do. Yeah, I feel Whether like... Whether you like it or not. Right, right, and I feel like, you know, there's, you know, you'll see, like, in, in market testing or, like, during the State of the Union address, they'll show, like, the, re or the debates, they'll show, like, the real time, the audience has, like, a dial in front of them, and they're like, dial this way <laughs> if you like it, and dial that way if you don't like it. <laughs> there are times in the movie where stuff would happen, and I would be dialing, like, oh, no, whoa, like, I don't like this, it's whatever, I've seen it, or I, it's not. But that in hindsight, as it would take another turn, I would go, like, oh, actually, you know what, that was smart. Yeah. I didn't think that was smart at the time, but I actually, retrospectively now that I know this information, yeah. I like that a lot. And I was doing that throughout the movie, kind of saying like, where is this taking us? Where am I going? I don't know if I'm feeling that. Oh, wait, no, now that does make sense. But now I'm not really sure about this. Okay, well, this actually does make sense. Mm -hmm. And it's and, and I, that's what I would want to prepare people for is instead of just sitting there and we're kind of watching the movie. And this is this is something that I think happens with a lot of M. Night things, partly because he that's sort of he played into this a little mm -hmm. bit. Instead of just sitting and watching this movie and waiting for the, the twist. twist. Um, and there are, you know, as with any film, there are revelations and, and different things that are revealed, some big, some small. Just, I would just advise, watch it, let it take you where it's gonna take you, and then when you get to the end, for me, that's when I said, I, I, I was, I, I'm on board with this, or I'm not on board with this. This is gonna be one of those films that you're gonna see on every movie blog and site and f fan sites and whatever the point counterpoint thing. Yeah. Split. Uh, uh, glass was was a great end and glass was a massive letdown. And I think that there are gonna be people on both sides. I'm a little I'm a little less optimistic about audience response than you are, but I'm very confident in my response, which was very positive. I, I think that the other thing that the movie does, and this is what I want to say say about what I was saying before, is that I, that's all I really ever want from a movie. I mean, mm -hmm. I may like it, I may not. But what I tend to be more critical of a film is when it's very clear to me that it is that it didn't go to plan. Mm -hmm. um, that somewhere in the mix it fell apart or someone lost the vision um, or there were too many notes or too many cooks in the kitchen and it becomes fragmented. Uh, this is not that case. Uh, yeah. It's very, very, very clear. It's, it, it's a he is not a subtle filmmaker. We know this. Um, he is he is sometimes quite on the nose as a filmmaker, but it's a very clear vision, and that's what I appreciate about it. And the other thing that I appreciate about it is that it it understands that time has moved forward, mm -hmm. and that what comic book movies are have progressed, and that what he did in Unbreakable, he's going to have to do something a little different here. And I think what he did in Unbreakable is, and what they're doing around this movie is they're really playing into, especially in the marketing, about the, uh, the idea of this split between hero and villain. And that ha that's played into here as well, but by the time you get to the end of the film, yeah. that becomes a murkier equation. And that's a different kind of comic book experience. And you're talking about like Magneto type of experience. I'm not talking about with any of these characters, but just thematically. Mm -hmm. um, 
And that's actually a richer exploration in a lot of ways. And I won't say how and why that happens here um, at all, but we can get that into that later. But I think that in that sense, I think it's smartly made by him, if not um, incredibly meta at the same time. Yeah, I, I, I didn't. Very self-referential. Yeah, but it didn't annoy me. It, it felt ref self-referential in the way that Unbreakable felt to mm -hmm. me, and uh, and the sense of like, particularly toward the end when you realize that he was being very referential throughout the film. But this felt like a fully executed vision for M Night. I didn't feel any compromise. I didn't feel like he was pulling any punches. I didn't feel like he was making it up. Mm -hmm. Like he said that he had a trilogy planned, and he didn't really. This felt like something that he had thought out. Uh, James McAvoy is great as he was in uh, Split. Uh, Samuel. And he's gonna get. He's going to get ignored. You know, that'll never really get a lot of due, but he's f fantastic in this movie. It was great to see Samuel L. Jackson back as Mr. Glass. Um, he, he was uh, He's as good in this film as I think he was in Unbreakable, and I thought he was great in Unbreakable. Bruce Willis showed up to work. Bruce Willis showed up to work. Uh, you know, I mean, he, that, that part was underplayed in Unbreakable. It's underplayed here, but it doesn't seem kind of lazy or phoned in. Mm -hmm. There are uh, returning cast members. Some of them have been in the trailer. Some of them won't, so I won't say who, but I thought that the acting all around... Uh, was was really solid. I thought it was shot really well. I liked the score. Um, this was the M. Night Shyamalan that I think people saw 20 years ago, hard to believe, 20 years ago when The Sixth Sense came out and saw the kind of films that he could make. I think this is one of those films. Uh, I think if M. Night had not had the downturn in his career that he did, um, it'd be interesting to see the kind of conversation around this film if mm -hmm. that hadn't happened because I think it's both good and it helps him in both Hurts him and helps him, because I think that there's a, a very critical eye on him looking for a slip, you yeah. know, now that he's come back with a couple of films, starting with A Visit and then with Split. And then there's also a part of us that that wants so desperately to see that return to form. So we may find that there, too, just yeah. because we want to find it. Um, so that's all I think we can... I, I, There's not much I, more I can add I, yeah. because I don't want to. It, it really is as much about discovering the what yeah. what you know about this movie uh, the, as it goes out. You know, I don't really want to say much more yeah. because it, it really anything that I say still is not going to be able to. It, it's really just going to be up to you. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, I'm on board. I was not disappointed. Uh, I didn't really have much expectation of what it was going to be going in. I didn't really have anything built up already in my head as far as what I wanted it to be. Yeah. I tried to just go in saying, I'm going to see what this is. And I, I liked it. I feel like if there are some things perhaps that you have in your brain that you expect of it that it doesn't give you, then maybe you might be disappointed. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and that's all I'll say for now. I, I, I really look forward to more than... Uh, um, you know, there's there's a few movies that I'm like super excited to delve into. Mm. Hereditary was one of them. The first split when it came out uh, to talk about the twist was another one. This is one that I'm super excited to be able to talk about and really break down and debate and ta and compare notes on because there's a lot to get through in this movie, which I love. I love a movie that gives me a lot to digest and to go through and to make judgments on, and this is one of those films for me. So I think we will be talking about that quite a bit more in our spoiler review. We'll break down beat by beat sort of the what happened in this movie, the construction of the movie, um, where people may be happy, where they may not. I will say this, don't go in looking for don't go in looking for an M. Night twist. He kind of backed himself in a corner mm -hmm. in his career, I think, by setting up those expectations around a twist. Yeah. Um, because I don't actually think there's any twist in this movie that you can't see coming. No. Um, but that shouldn't really be the point of the film, in my opinion. It's a different kind of storytelling than just, yeah. here's one piece of information that you didn't know. It, yeah. He's playing a bigger game here, and yeah. that's what I actually like about the film the most. Yeah. We will talk about that much more in our spoiler review, which will be available the weekend that Split comes out. In the inter interim, let us know if you see it, if you liked it, if you didn't, um, and speak, as always, you know, courteously. Yeah. It's just a movie. It's just a movie, and uh, we can't wait to talk about it with you further. Yeah. We will see you next time.